You're listening to the Real Estate Radio Hour, the show that brings you unfiltered stories and insight from the Twin Cities real estate world with your hosts, Chris Rooney, broker at REMAX Preferred, and Andy Presky, leader of the Preferred Home Team at REMAX Advantage Plus. Bom dia. I made it back, boys. He's back. He's back. Barely. Yeah. I uh, barely made it, actually. What, you guys know uh, where I went? What adventure, what adventure did you have? So I was up at the cabin a couple weeks ago, and, and my buddy Blair says to me, Andy, hey, one of our guys backed out uh, going up to Canada to a fly-in fishing camp. And I was in until I heard fly-in, right? Because I, I, I do not like to fly. That's just nothing wrong with it. Just don't like to do it. So – I, I, I hesitantly said yes, because I love to fish, but I hate to fly. And I don't tell anybody this, of course, because in their heads are like, come on, dude, let's go. It's, you know, guys, guys, right? And uh, so we flew into a, a camp called Tang of the North, um, lodge.com, I think it is. What a great outfit. Wonderful people get up every morning, have breakfast, they actually have hot showers, they have um, satellite radio, the whole thing. You, then you go out fishing, fishing's great. The lake's deeper. So not only do you get walleye in the tributary lakes, but you actually have lake trout. So there's, um, in the I think the main lake's like 240 feet deep or something crazy. So it, it was cool. Um, and then uh, when we were when we were flying home, of course, I, I take, uh, what Nick, what did I tell you I take? Some pills. Yeah. Flying pills, you know, so they just, so they just chill me out. So Drugs. basically, I can sit there and, and like the guy said, Andy, just hold your crayons. And I'm just in there and I'm like looking the window, looking outside and, and I'm so out of it. Right. But we climb into this little plane and, and I have, I don't bend very good. So I'm like Ugh, sliding into this cockpit. You get in there, I strap in and these guys are, of course they know that I'm struggling with wanting to fly home. I want to get home, but yet they know I hate to fly. How old is this old bird? Well, it's a 19, uh, whatever. And he goes, wow, that makes it 70 years old. And the, and the kid goes, the, the pilot, you know, he's probably 30. He's like, oh, this old bird, she's better taken care of than, you know, whatever. It's just maintained beautifully. We build the engines every whatever. Starts them up. Both engines smoke a little bit, just a titch, a little bit. And I'm kind of going, oh, boy. Maybe they're not quite rebuilt. We're at the end of the rebuild. But I'm still, imagine Andy sitting there holding his crayons and looking out the window going, oh, no, oh, no. I'm trying not to panic. He fires up the engine, fires up the other engine. We're sitting there and he starts pumping whatever. I don't know what they pump. Maybe a pilot could tell us. He's sitting there and he pumps something. And he, he, he goes, all right, here we go, boys. Let's go. And he reaches down to grab another lever. And it goes boom, into his hand. <laughs> and I'm and sitting there. The and I can't move my mouth. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm dying. I'm dying. And my buddies are like <laughs> dying laughing because they know that I'm dying in the back. And I'm like, if I could move, I would grab the door and jump out. And anyway, it, it turned out to be some kind of a rudder. And uh, and, and he goes, oh, it, it's not going to affect our flight at all. It's just in, in the water. Um, and so the kid in front of me, literally, w w they wound up this cable. The kid pulled it and sat there holding the cable the whole time we flew home. Whew. That makes me sweat. Some, about it. Just, it was just some kind of rudder. No big deal. I, I wasn't into details at that point. I was trying to get out of there. I was like, I'll take a, I'll take an Uber home. They're like, there's no roads up here, sir. There's not even logging roads to get there. There's oh. nothing worse than not being in control. Oh. Yeah, you know, and the guys that fly in there though, and, and this is just, I'll, I'll, I'll be nice for a second. Wonderful people, wonderful, super nice. Um, any, you know, when, when he saw that I had that look in my eye, he goes, Oh, this is one of the best maintained birds in the in the whole fleet. 
you're flying one of our best. And, and he could tell I had a little, you know, tingle in my eye where I was going, <laughs> as I get on the, the, the plane. I, I don't know. Hey, I'll tell you what, though. Last week, they say you don't know what you got until uh, you don't have it no more. That was the first week in like two years I haven't seen you or us three been together weekly. And I don't know, I kind of missed the, the energy. So I'm glad you're back. And I'm glad we're rolling Thank again. You. Thank you. I, I was trying to figure out a way to do it. And, and I don't, maybe you guys can help me figure that out. They do have a satellite connection there. But your phone has to be set up a certain way. For it to do a live stream like that, it almost has to be like FaceTime, I think. But I don't know if it would pick up our stream. But I, it was gore. I'll be honest with you. It is something that um, I've always wanted to do, you know. And then, and when you get up there and you're, it, Chris, you know, I don't. You're not much. I don't think you fish much, do you? Never. Yeah. And I could make you a fisherman up there. I mean, you're just you're hooking a little minnow. You drop it over the side and you're pulling up a 27 inch walleye, or like for me, I was screwing around, of course, weird, um, in the front of the boat, and I'm not even paying attention, and we're in like 12 feet of water, and I caught a 28 inch long lake trout, um, which I thought I caught a shark. That thing was like around the boat. That was that was fun. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it would start with putting whatever on the hook, and it would end with taking whatever out is on the other end. Yeah, with me because. Uh, I got bit by a fish at 11 years old, and now I can't like I don't mess with them. We we had one, uh, and I, I know I'm probably dragging this out way longer than it should be, but um, the so my buddy Blair is is adamant fisherman, fishes all the time. The other two guys that are with us fish all the time, and I'm with basically three engineers, right? So these guys are all stats, data, whatever, and I kind of joked with them a little bit, and we were looking at when I got home. These guys did a spreadsheet. And took screenshots of where we went on the GPS every day with a copy of the weather for that day, what color of jig we were using, so they could get the data put together. So there's like some science behind this. Like on a 73 degree day with sun, um, with the water being 56 degrees, we caught three of these and two of those on this color jig. Yeah. It was great. But anyway, it was fun. It was fun. I because I don't think that way. I just go up there and go, we got lucky. Woo! We got a fish. <laughs> It's it's the fishing it's the fishing show. Oh, I think this man. is a good start. How about uh, that could kind of whip us into uh, how Lakeshore sales are going. How are Lakeshore go sales going, Chris? Lakeshore sales are uh, still moving, Andy. Um, usually, you know, this is kind of it's actually a little late. Um, I say to get them on the market, just because they it, once you start getting into summer and nice weather. People mm -hmm. want to start enjoying it. Now, the good ones are going to sell no matter what, but sometimes they're just the little the doldrums of summer uh, because people are trying to enjoy it versus uh, just starving for it. Right. So, but yeah, no, it's a uh, market. Obviously, it's, it's still moving. Um, well, well, don't, Chris, I mean, and uh, don't you, okay. So the, the all-time, like, battle is the, it's our last summer in our beautiful dream home before we downsize. We want to spend the whole summer there and then sell it as the ice is coming on the lake, right? And let the new buyer take the docks out. And and the other person says, I want, if I'm going to pay this price, I want the whole summer, especially 4th of July at the new place, right? No problem. Yeah. And that's what happens. Then people wait. They wait it out. And that's why fall is usually a really good time in which to be able to sell because that expectation is now gone. And when people are listing them and they're telling people, you know what, I really don't want to be out until the summer's open. Or right. over, why would I want to go buy it? And maybe I'll just wait a month or two to see if something else comes up that I can grab. So it's a, it's, it is, it's kind of a tight one. But I mean, obviously, if it's in, if it's, if it's good lake shore, good lake front, the house is nice. People are gonna wait for it regardless. Yeah. Okay. Wow. It that counted as your commercial. You're over. Nope. That's only that. That's called the short. We don't. We don't do shorts or clips on this show, son. We uh, we do ads. Give him an analogy, Nick. He'll then he'll feel better. Cookies are better with. with sorry. Yes, you gotta save them. So you should have heard this character that we had up there. This dean. I can't repeat anything that he said on the radio or on the show here, but he. Uh, oh my god, had me laughing so hard. 
you, you know how you get that guy? He's from the bush. He's up in the up in Canada all the time, and they they talk different and they say things that are, in their opinion, is very appropriate for fish camp, but not in real life. Is that the FBI guy? Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Oh. Okay. No. And, uh, you've got some good uh, bedfellows up there. Is yeah. The one guy could protect you really well. Yeah. That was the so that was my other group of guys I went to Canada with. We still haven't gotten our junk together since before COVID. Um, that's that's my other group that that the okay. So I, now I got two groups that, to deal with. <laughs> yes, you do. Huh. Hi, boys. What do we got? I guess there? Minnesota news. What's happening in the market? Looks like there's more help on the way for first-time home buyers in Minnesota. The government recently approved a $150 million housing assistance package aimed at helping thousands of first-generation home buyers, especially people of color, come up with a down payment. Tell me about this. Is it good? What's going to happen? I'm and curious what they mean by first-generation. So is that first-generation Americans? I would assume. Steve Probably are. I guess we got to read the fine print. Over here. Yeah. That, hey, that's fine. Cool. It's an American dream, man. Sorry, guys. I had the rubber industry calling me. I got to get rid of them. <laughs> it's, that's what it says. I'm like, what? The rubber um, industry? All right. Well, I haven't heard much about this program uh, here, but uh, anytime you, know, you start incentivizing people, I mean, typically it will help. Um, I guess in the long run, will it help? I mean, we are at a, at a point where the prices are rising. People are wondering. If uh, something's going to happen, uh, what's going to happen, which way it's going to go. Uh, inventory keeps saving us, but if that changes and you're getting people in that are borrowing the down payment and have nothing into it, that's where uh, we got in a little trouble last time. <laughs> and uh, people started losing their house and, and letting them go. So I just hope they're, they're careful with it and they've learned from our nice 2008 little debacle. Yeah. Well, you, you probably remember that too, Chris. I mean, we had some really cool programs. Uh, that were available back then as well that were up to $8,500. They put it against your taxes. So you get a tax return um, was the way they were doing it. But and you had to come up with the money first. Yeah, yeah I think, I think so. Yeah. yeah yes. you and then you got the credit. And you could use it. You could use a loan from a, a relative or whatever. There wasn't a whole lot of fine print. There it was more just buy a house if you want one. Yeah. And there's a lot of those people that bought houses back then when houses were really reasonable. Mm -hmm. That have made tons of equity, which is the American dream. Mm -hmm. Most people that have what <laughs> most people that have uh, have a lot of wealth or generate any wealth, it comes from their the real estate investment or their house or whatever. And 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 hey guys, that that's what it's all about, right? So helping somebody out that doesn't know that it's like a secret, and it's but it's not a secret, right? So it's um, you got to pay somebody anyway monthly. You might as well pay your own mortgage, and and then at the end of thirty years own the thing, but. It, what I like you, Chris, concern myself with is that right now we're kind of at a, a real interesting point in the marketplace where we have, um, you know, houses that are artificially appreciated over the last couple of years because of demand, because of the lack of supply to the market. It's created a lot of demand and those that can afford it. We're putting a lot of pressure on pricing and then that artificially jumped our prices up, in my opinion. So when talking the news saying house prices are down, I don't think they're necessarily down. If you would have not followed the BS of it going up. You would have just said, hey, that should have been here instead of here. It, we're still above where we were, um, mm -hmm. but it, it's it's reality. So it, what I've got more of a concern with right now, because I don't know if you've been following these stories. They were talking about uh, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae having their credit scores or their, their risk ratings going up. So th they're higher risk, which means their rates will go up, which means, I mean, money across the board. They were saying that closing costs could go up more than 25% if that happens. And it's all correlated with this debt ceiling that's going on. So if you are thinking about buying a house right now and you are having issues with the deposits and the down payments and whatever else, you're better off making your move now, taking advantage of these products because if that hits us and all of a sudden that affects our closing costs, I mean, can you imagine having, now you've saved up for how many years, now your closing costs jump up 25% and then the houses you're trying to buy keep going up. That kind of market you'll never catch up in. Yeah. Yeah, yep. And so I've, I've been telling everybody, first-time buyers, get on now. Yes. So I got I had to get all that out. Sorry. <laughs> you did good. I like it. Yeah. I, uh, I, uh, I wonder, I just, 
I, I sit and I, I try to think what is going to happen with this market and, you know, are our rates going to change our, but I'll tell you what, I mean, as, as many buyers that are getting out, there's more coming in. There's still not a lot of sellers putting their stuff on the market. And I just, I just don't know if we're in, I, I just don't think we're in trouble. I really don't. Um, people, there's people out there with the money in which to be able to purchase it. I think they all feel like this is kind of an interim type thing, yep. um, which might not be the, might not be the greatest thing, but, uh, it's a year, two, three, four year kind of thing and that the rates will come down and they'll, um, you know, be able to refinance and, and, and feel good about their, their purchase. But people got to live too. They got to live somewhere. They got to, right. they want to own something. So. I think we keep going, but I do think that uh, we're not going to have the amount of sales that we had before. And I think there's people, realtors, uh, loan officers, title companies that are going to be hurting a little, um, you know, in this market. There's just not enough to go around for everyone. Right. Well, they the interesting fact this morning, National Association of Realtors just put out a study that was saying like in California alone, they've they've dropped like over, what is it? Four percent of their realtors in the last thirty days have dropped off, and they're not they're they're leaving the industry in in mass. So we have about one point five million real estate agents across the country, and they're projecting that by the end of the year it'll be down to like one point one million um, or something around that number. And so they're saying you're gonna you're gonna see about thirty three percent of the people getting out of the business in the next six months, roughly, and that that blows my mind. Yeah. That's good for us because there won't be as much real estate uh, content. Yep. And you guys will finally get famous out the, the shorts and whatnot. So I'm well, excited. Well, think about this. Most people think real estate agents make a ton of money, right? So 2000, uh, what was it? The COVID year, 2020 and 21. I think the average National Association Realtors Commission was 106,000. Okay. This year, um, they're projecting it to be 48,000. Hmm. And, and I don't care who you are. You, you can work at McDonald's and make more money than that. Now everybody's 25 bucks an hour, whatever the heck they are. You're not going to be a real estate agent work this hard and have people picking on you in commissions and having to sell this hard and and not be making a decent living. I think people got to remember too. I mean, forty eight thousand is is gross. <laughs> you know, there's you're for sure a popular there's, there's a lot of expenses that realtors have yep. that uh, you don't have in your normal job. So, yep. um, yeah, I mean, even doing a, a podcast or doing social media or doing those reels or doing brochures or putting signs on the property or doing advertising. I mean, you're two, 3,000 a month on that. And now that's 36 grand to your 48. That's not, that's not a good ratio. Uh, how much am I paying? <laughs> you're only making 12,000 a year, Andy. Oh, right. I think Serious my house better take over. Yeah. Is the amount of realtor effort any different between a $400,000 home and an $800,000 house to justify Double the fees. Why not go to flat rate, rate pricing instead of a percentage? So they're asking, is there a difference? What do you think, Andrew? Do you think there's a difference? Um, I'm sure that came across from somebody that doesn't understand our industry. There's a risk. There's a risk threshold when you get into an, a business. And, and let's assume that you put in 10 hours on a file and, and you make $1,200. You put 10 hours on a file and you make uh, $2,400. The, the idea there is that it, it's an average. So the we as an industry, um, just like in restaurants or whatever else, sometimes they have items that they have a loss leader on just to get you in the door, the, the $7 cheeseburger, hoping that you buy a drink that they can make money on. So every industry has to have its pockets of income that it relies on. And every once in a while, somebody will come along that will buy that more expensive home from you. And in my opinion, you provide the same service. They experience percentage-wise the same value that a person that buys at four hundred thousand. It's they make double the profit. They make double the whatever. And to get somebody that's good at what they do, I, I do think they're you know in some well, in some markets, Chris, I've seen especially Canada and where they get up into the three and four million dollar range, they'll pay six percent like on the first million, and then after that they have a sliding scale for how they go above that. So the, the market will cure itself. I mean, eventually, if you get to the point of where you have, um, I don't want to say the word flat rates, but real estate agents are smart. They'll get creative. Once they see that, hey, I don't need to make, you know, 15000 on a file. I can survive on 10. They'll do it. But, it, you know, right now it's so hit and miss with this industry that I think everybody's hanging on to every dollar they can get. 
it's risk it's risk versus reward and i'll tell you what you you this question to me could easily be taken care of and if depending on what kind of realtor you have and who your realtor is so there's some that yeah that i mean totally i wouldn't i wouldn't pay them i wouldn't pay them nothing you know because you, that's exactly what you're getting so you gotta gotta pay for what the service is everything's negotiable yeah. uh with an agent you don't have to pay six percent you don't have to pay seven you don't have to pay two you don't have to pay one if you don't want to um and there's a lot of people out there that might uh do it for that but you're probably going to get what you what you're paying for as well so it's just one of those things that um you got to feel if it's if it's good for you if it's not then you want to negotiate it and try to get it to a better price and there's so many options now to be able to do it on your own you can certainly yeah. do it on your own and list it on your own and, and yep. do it it's just yep. it's a very hard thing i don't even do my own properties i've been doing it for 33 years and i sell a lot of real estate and i don't even sell my own you know because it's 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 tough when you put yourself in that position it's a lot different than me representing you and uh working in your best interest but when you're on your own you're kind of like geez that would be nice to be able to grab that you don't have someone smarter saying hey well here's the story there's nothing out there right now these people haven't whatever whatever the situation is but you get to a point that hey i'm going to be able to make you more money i tell you i've done it many times where i'm going to accept it and they're like no we'll, we'll just hang on because i'm i shouldn't say that but i'm kind of like hey just done move on get to the next deal and uh you know trying to maximize each one you know the people that i have do my stuff which is in my office is uh it's worth it's worth the money that i pay them hey uh, we've all we've all got the buddy or the girlfriend boyfriend whatever over the years that they get the bad hair plugs or they have lasik surgery versus the the off-brand surgery they get implants and they're not i mean th there's the <laughs> Please don't he, cut that where I go like this. He knew it was coming, yeah. He knew it was coming. No, but think about it. We've all seen it where you're like, yeah, I got this whole procedure done for 1500 bucks, and their eyes are weird, or their, their hairlines look like the plugs aren't even straight in their head. And it's like, <laughs> I'd pay the extra 1000 bucks to get the right hair plug line put in or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I've had those buddies that have done that stuff, and you're like, I don't know if I would have with the discounter on that deal. You know, yeah. things that are important to you, you should pay for, because like I said to a lot of my clients, hey, when that 800,000 becomes 1.2 million because I put you in the right place at the right time, cut the right deal for you, I'm not going to ask for any of the 400,000 on the upside that you made on the house in 10 years or whatever, you know? I'm just going to be a, a a a fair guy at a fair price and let you make those equities, you know? So I think people have to remember as well is that there is an investment um not only in the time from an experience that you've been in the industry, but there's there's an investment in the house. Um, that we put up that not knowing if we're ever going to get paid. And so, I mean, there's some risk to that. You know, if you eliminate the risk, people are going to do it for a lot less. You know, if I can go in and say, hey, you give me 10 grand to be able to sell this regardless, I'm going to get paid. Right. And you're going to pay my expenses. Hell yeah, let's go. So, so Chris, this is, uh, and again, I'm sorry, we're totally off track, but um, let's keep going. Um, since we're going 60 miles an hour off the tracks anyway. Yeah. Um, so NAR has that website or that lawsuit right now happening where this exact argument's being made, where buyers are saying they were wronged because when the agent, the buyer agent came in and said, hey, we're not charging you anything to represent you as a buyer. Reality is they're getting paid 2.7% from the seller. So what these attorneys are saying is, you know, we could have bought that house for 2.7% less in theory if we didn't have them paying your fees. Argument is, is like, well, they'd work for a flat rate. Maybe they just write up the paperwork for a flat fee or whatever. And, and that's where I say also back to attorneys, you don't need to collect 44% of my injured leg injury car accident, but you do because there's risk and reward. You don't charge a flat fee because nobody would pay it. Same with real estate guys. People will not pay a flat fee in real estate until they've seen the performance. So until the people that are hiring the services will say, we're good, like you said, Chris, guarantee you 10 grand to help us sell this house and I'll pay you up front no refunds um and and then you'll see uh people's behaviors change but as long as you're putting yeah. the risk onto the person that you're hiring then they're always going to be charging you more than what you and, and some people think is is a fair fee mm -hmm. risk reward I agree. 
Well, they said I could have 30 seconds on the show for a quick ad. Andy Prasky, Remax Advantage Plus. Andy at Prasky.com if you want to email us. Here's the thing. 22 years in the business, over 1,400 sales. I'd like to help you with your real estate needs. If that's buying, if that's selling, if that's building, whatever it is, give us a call. Send us an email. Let's get you started on your real estate journey. I'd like to help you on the way. Uh, lots of experience here, and I uh, would like to put it to work for you. Andy Prasky, Remax Advantage Plus. Thanks for listening to the show. So ever since I've gone into real estate, I've been getting more and more forehead wrinkles. And I've been trying to figure out, like, why am I getting so many forehead wrinkles? And I have finally figured it out. It's called the surprise year in real estate wrinkles. And what that is, is whenever anything happens in this business, we always go, what the fuck did they just say to me? I'm sorry, how low enough did they just submit? Yeah, it's my fiduciary duty, Jonathan. I'm looking out for the best interest of my client. I want to grab a pen and paper and take some notes. I'm 31. That's oh, awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, how's ours, Andy? Mike? Yeah, I got them too. Those real estate wrinkles. There. Oh, gee, yep, he's got them. Yeah. Well, mine, mine don't even go away anymore. I'm getting too old. Hey, speaking of, uh, that's why I love to meet with people rather than talk on the phone. I'd much rather meet with them because of exactly what that guy was just saying. I mean, that's nonverbal. And you can find out a lot about a person when you look them straight in the eyes because people have a real hard time doing that. I was laughing. I stopped at a restaurant the other day, and this poor little girl at the hostess stand, I mean, she couldn't even look at, look at me. You know, and I kept trying to look at her, but she was like, couldn't even, you know, where do you want to sit? Do you, do you have a place that you'd like to go? And I'll just follow you, you know, I'm like, okay. But she, they can't, they don't look at people anymore. They don't talk. I mean, it's usually if she would have texted me, I think I would have got a, you know, cute emoji or something. What table I had to go to. But yeah. it's just kind of sad. I, I was just, and I was thinking about it. I'm like, what's going to, what's going to happen with this world? I see that a lot of times with offers. I just get emailed offers. No one even calls me. No one does anything. They just, they just email it over. And it's just crazy to me, but. Oh, wow. World's changing, my friend. That's it. Yeah. You want to pick your time of the day to show those quiet neighborhoods. Parties. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I'll tell you what, though. Those are, those are things you want to find out at the beginning, though. You really do. You don't want that to be a problem later on. It's so much better to get everything out before you ever close on it. I'm telling you, both ways, even if you're on the wrong end of it, it's just better that they know. And then, because you're you're in a lot better position, if all of a sudden it comes out that, hey, there's huge loud party next door, and there's parties all the time, and they're drug dealers, and you call the cops on them 17 times, and you didn't feel like you should probably let them know that that might uh, ruin their right of enjoyment of the property. It just becomes a real icky, icky piece. And it might not even be about that party, but it's everything else in that house now becomes a, a way in which to be able to go after you. So, Well, and just, isn't, isn't it going to be now where you can have drug deals happening next door as long as you have a permit? As long as you have what? A permit. Yeah. Exactly. Isn't it legal here now to do drug deals? Yeah. yeah the see, I gets rid of the drug dealers now. So yeah, we can just great, go buy them. Great direction to head. Let's let's yeah. just keep going. Huh. What what kind of inside deal are you talking about? All I can say is underpriced waterfront property that's guaranteed to appreciate in value. That's all I can say. Oh, wait, are, are you bothered by sorority noise though? I, I don't know, Brian. I, I don't know if I'm a real estate investor. Well, you might surprise yourself. I don't know about buying a place without seeing it first. Of course not. I wouldn't expect you to. But as your friend, I wanted to let you know early because there's another buyer who's about to snap it up. Not Lou Sheridan, is it? Do you like Lou Sheridan? I hate Lou Sheridan. It's Lou Sheridan. Say what you want, but he's got an eye for real estate. Let me just give him a call and let him know he's going to get the place. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, I'll take it. All right, you won't be sorry. And that, that's why that's why our industry is, why do we pay these people this much? Yeah, no, totally. I uh, I had a really hard time hearing that. So, Andy, you're going to have to just comment. I just smiled. Well, he was talking about a real estate investor, and he said, basically, 
you know, like, I don't know if I'm a real estate investor. And he says, oh, come on. And then he, he says, he mentioned the name and the, he goes, Lou, whatever. And he goes, hey, he goes, he's buying, he's buying the property. I hate that guy. And he goes, yeah, that's the guy that's buying it. I should call him right now. Let him know he got the property. <laughs> and then he goes, I'll take it. Yeah. It goes against. I hope my comprehension little... was correct. Yeah. yeah I, thought, no problem. I thought it was just kind of like slimy real yes. estate people and how to be careful for that and, and so forth. Well, did you notice his big chiclet teeth? <laughs> the dog normally doesn't have teeth like that. It's unfortunate. It happens in every industry, but uh, yeah, it's I I feel it. I've seen it. I've dealt with it uh, more than once. So, ick. All right, boys, let's get into our this or that. These are kind of going viral on YouTube and, and Facebook. People like to hear what real estate experts have to say about their city. Um, let's uh, bring it to you by Chris Rooney, Home Experts. I was just one years old when my family started in real estate, where both my parents were agents. They also dabbled in investing in real estate, rentals, flips, and construction. After college, I went right into getting my license in July of 1990. As a 23-year-old agent in an industry that looks nothing like today, I had to know more for my clients to choose me. There wasn't Zillow or social media to tell them how good I was. I had to win them over with knowledge. With knowledge comes confidence, and with confidence comes results. I found Speaking of uh, going viral, Nick, on these things, I've, I've had a few people harass me on them, of, of my choices. Which one do they disagree on? Shakopee, Jordan, Par Lake, Lakeville, which one? Yeah. Shakopee, Shakopee, Jordan. Shakopee, Jordan. I was at the Prior Lake game at Shakopee, and I know quite a few people there. And they just <laughs> happened to mention something. <laughs> it was pretty funny, actually. So. so now it's your turn, Andy, to get in trouble. Uh, no, thank you. I will uh, plead the fifth <laughs> and uh, sit here quietly drinking my coffee. Elk River. Because you, Andy, Elk River and the Rogers. Well, I'll tell you what, that, uh, so why don't we start, you guys want me to, so you want me to describe the city to you or what I like about the city or how do you want to do this? Yeah. Yeah. Talk about both and then say this or that, like the pros, the cons and your decision. Okay. So, uh, you know, I, I, I work and kind of real close live to both of these communities. So I know them very well, drive through Elk River frequently, Rogers frequently, I do business in both cities. Um, I would say if you were looking for a city with a small town feel, but yet close to the Twin Cities, it would be Elk River. It has an old, like, kind of charming downtown. One of my favorite restaurants in the Twin Cities uh, is that Daddio's. It's up there. It used to be Little Brooklyn over in Brooklyn Center. They moved up there. Um, so I meet some of my buddies up there, my brothers, sometimes up there for lunch. Um, it also has a newer amenities on the other side. And, and their sports teams are really still uh, coming together. Um, and, and, you know, football and basketball and all these teams are really, really starting to shine. It's becoming a shining city from an athletic perspective as well. Um, now, as far as cool things about that town, they do have the North Star. If you're into going downtown, um, runs right through town. Um, they have all the amenities, modern stuff that you'd want to see up there. And then there's quite a variety of housing. So from the older existing charming stuff to the newer mid-priced, and they even have acreage. So if you want to have a fancy house out on the golf course or you know, live on 10 acres, that all can be accommodated in that town. Price ranges are still affordable as well. So? So, Which Rogers? One? You're a Rogers guy? I, You know what? I like Rogers. Rogers, um, I jokingly used to call it the truck stop town because when I first started working out there, all it was was the happy chefs sitting out there in the corner and all the truckers that would stop on their way into the cities to regas and have lunch or whatever, breakfast. And um, I've been selling in Rogers for over 20 years, um, mostly new construction. So I, I started on, uh, man, I don't remember what the name of the development was. Ended up in Edgewater when I was finally up behind that Vite up on the hill up there. You know, the fancy development. They were, um, uh, it, there's a whole nother episode I could talk about that, how the developer failed and everything else. But sold a lot of houses in Rogers over the years. It's a great value. Um, and it, it's very hit or miss. It was very, interestingly enough. Back in the day, not so much today, but back in the day, it was very like hot or cold based on gas prices. So people that didn't want to commute wouldn't go as far as Rogers. But people that wanted to be just a little farther out, out of the city hustle and bustle, 
And 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 Rogers has the same thing. Charming city, charming downtown. Um, granted, as a freeway running through the middle of it, but that's okay too. It just brings a lot of commerce to the area. Brings a lot more, you know, um, cars driving by to to buy their widgets and keeps those stores and business up there to easy access. You know. So if I was going to buy something more in the million dollar range, which city do you think I should go to? Elk River. And why is that? Just because I think that that, that buyer, the amenities that they could, uh, or the lifestyle that they could achieve with that, with, you know, more acreage or being on a country club kind of a, you know, vibe or the golf course, I should say, um, you know, those are, are, are uh, easier to attain in that area. Um, now, Rogers, what's cool about Rogers is you, you start getting towards the south end of Rogers, you know, kind of towards that Hassan and um, uh, the, uh, oh, I forget the name of the little town, Fletcher or whatever it's called right there. And that side of you're, you're five minutes out of Maple Grove. You just go right down the back roads and you're right to Mama G's in about four minutes and then right into all of that modern North Maple Grove. So it's actually pretty accessible to two cities. So you like to shop and you like to be a little closer in, I'd suggest Rogers because um, there's a lot of beautiful homes in both cities. And I, I really don't have a preference because I don't commute. So I would probably just as soon be a little farther up and go into Elk River. Um, but if I was a commuter, I'd probably place that home in, in Rogers. Cause I also hate this. I'm not trying to be in the middle, but I, I, I actually like both cities pretty darn equally. You're not going to get in trouble this way, Andy. Well, no, Rogers got itself in trouble a few years ago. I don't know if you guys ever heard about that. They were giving out a bunch of TIF money. They, they were giving like the dairy queen, like $400,000 to build a dairy queen up there. And they did, they wanted commerce. So they started really in, heavily like Cabela's and everything. Everybody got a little handout to move up to Rogers. And they got in trouble over time over it. And then that whole regime that was in there got wiped out and they replaced everybody. And now they've kind of cleaned it up and they're not handing out so much money. But they're, it was, I don't remember all the details. You could probably Google it and uh, find it. But they they did, the, the forefathers of the current administration were trying to get the commerce there to make it more than a truck stop town. And that's what they did at the expense of all that extra taxpayer money to get them there. And like some people are like, why should I pay, you know, to have a Dairy Queen here? You probably wouldn't have had a Dairy Queen there if, or the hotels that are there or the restaurants that are there if they didn't have that money available. But it was incentive to get those businesses in town. Right. And, then, and it, it created a town and in, in, uh, literally it, uh, turned from a truck stop to a town. The people's problem with it is, is, I mean, in reality, what they do is they just they just reduce their property taxes for a certain amount of time and mm -hmm. or have zero but the problem is, is that these companies are still using the city services. So they're costing them money and not paying any money. And that's where people have the problem. Well, yeah. And, and when they're not paying money, money, it actually problem. put the burden, it put the burden onto the homeowners mm -hmm. because the, the corporations that normally generate a lot of taxes were not. So I don't know if we're quite at that 20 year window yet, but I think it was like a 20 year window where they were forgiven and now they are kicking in. And so now you, 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 I don't know. It'll be interesting to see if they can stay afloat. Some of those businesses, yeah. you start adding 50,000, 40,000 a year in taxes onto a business and that takes away all their profit real fast and makes it maybe not as exciting to stay. Very true. Anyway, that nothing to do with housing, but it, it's, it's a real situation in that area. Yeah. Oh, well, boy. Hassan, Hassan township keeps getting annexed into the Rogers. So Rogers will keep growing for many, many years you know, to the, to the West and to the kind of, um, well, both sides, actually East and West side. Well, this one I'm talking about is a different Hassan. It's called Chan Hassan. Ooh. Chan Hassan versus Chaska. Okay. So I think this is exactly what Nick did to me last week with Shakopee and Jordan, because I think they both have uh, a, that, that feel. Um, Chan Hassan, uh, newer, a little newer, kind of, Settled between uh, Eden Prairie, Chaska, and Minnetonka, and uh, great. I mean, it's a it's a great area, but it's kind of like I I just feel like Chan Hassan doesn't really have their whole own identity because I think they're intertwined with a lot of the different places. Um, Chaska is is a river town for the most part. It's had a lot of time, a lot of issues with flooding. They've mm -hmm. solved uh, that problem. Not completely, but uh, a lot they of They rerouted it, the river? Yeah, it, they exactly what they did. Okay. And uh, actually rerouted it right around the home I just sold. And it was interesting because I, I went there and 
when we listed it, there wasn't a drop of water in that area. And then when we sold it, I mean, it was about four feet up. And it was pretty, it was pretty cool to see because they have an old ballpark there, uh, the Chaska, where the Chaska Hawks play. And uh, the town team and the high schools played there. And that used to get, I mean, normal. It would just flood every year uh, on the river bottoms there. And so it was totally like perfect. I'm like, wow, this is, uh, that worked out pretty darn good. But Chaska is, um, well, the rip, their town is being ripped apart right now. But uh, I think they're trying to get kind of that old, old downtown, a little more revitalized uh, again. And uh, 41 all the way up into what County Road 5 is um, really kind of a combination of the Chaska, Chan Hassan um, conglomerate in there. And I think that old town, they have an old town square that uh, is just to me has gotten just overran uh, with the trees are too big, the flies are too many. It's just not not used enough. And I think they need to incorporate that a little more. Um, there's a lot of cool old um, homes in Chaska. You can get in for a little less money on some of them if you, uh, you want that. Schools, I mean, Andy talked about schools and sports, and that's a big thing for people in, in town. So having uh, both of those schools uh, very strong uh, on both, uh, I think they're pretty close to the same um, size as well. So John Hansen's got a little newer houses. Uh, Chaska's got the old Jonathan, which was Jonathan was supposed to be the, I mean, I mean the premier neighborhood in the United States. They were created in this neighborhood. Um, not so much uh, anymore. It's it's different. It's a different type of uh, neighborhood design. But um, Chan Hansen, you're going to get a lot newer houses. Some of the, some of Chan Hansen is in Minnetonka School, so people like that. There's some lakes, uh, obviously the rivers. And now it comes down to which one Chris Rooney will choose. And he is going with Chaska. I'm kind of into the old town, the old uh, feel and the old uh, Norman Rockwell type feeling. And they got that new um, curling center. Have you seen that? Have you been there, Andy? I, I have a couple of friends that live down there. And uh, once a year, we probably get invited down there for dinner. Should be more. Me and a buddy and went. We, me and a buddy went, and John Mayasich, if you've heard of yeah. him, he was like a gopher hockey player. Okay. I mean, he was out there He was out there curling with the team. That's cool. The guy's got to be 90 years old. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a fun sport. I, I was in a league for one year and, and oh, enjoyed did. it. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know I that. In Blaine, they have a curling center up there in Blaine, too. So That Blaine whole thing is super cool, by the way. I was very impressed by that. Hey Andy, ask him a, a question relating to those cities. Don't do the same one though. Make it more like interesting, I think. Um, what school has the better colors for their teams? Okay. Um, well, Chaska's right. Chask purple and gold. And I, I don't know about that. And Chan Hassan is kind of more of a gray and a blue. I, I would know yep. that. So I'm going to go with Chan Hassan. And I like, okay. I, I like their assisted AD. Nick, do you know who that is? Grant Broderick. Oh, he really? That, yeah, he works that uh, gig over there. I was Morgan was playing volleyball against him, but he's working. I'm like, what the what the heck are you doing? Dude? And he's like, all these kids now have these actual real important jobs. It's interesting. It sucks getting old because all of a sudden these kids are now adults and have jobs and yeah. Okay, I got one. Okay, so uh, a new family. Uh, just had a, a baby. They got a five hundred thousand dollar budget. Where are they choosing, Chaska or uh, Chan Hassan? They're low thirties. I think I think they're going to get more money and kind of the lifestyle they want in in Chaska. I think they're going to get. It's going to be a little older home. It might be in Jonathan, uh, the area of Jonathan, and that's it's nice for parks and trails and uh, along the, the along the river and uh, the small town feel, but yet close to everything. You're right on, you're right on two twelve. You're right on forty one. Right on one sixty nine. Really, um, get yeah. in and out of there. I'm gonna I'm gonna let them start looking at Chaska. And I happen to be um, a, a good friend of Nick's from high school. I ended up buying out in that uh, Chaska Victoria area because they're all kind of together uh, out there. So. Yeah, I ride out. Uh, it's, I've been out to Maconia recently a couple of times, and I rode out that 
212 or whatever yeah. it is and then you turn north on some road up to Waconia yeah. but it um but it was yeah it looks like a nice nice they got a fleet farm which is super nice <laughs> so is Carver oh yeah. All right, boys. So just in case the those closing costs shoot up in the United States, uh, we're going to show another foreign property here. And this, I think, could be an amazing opportunity for uh, rentals and Airbnbs. I think you can make a crap ton of money in uh, the European summer because that's where we're going. We're going to the land of La Dolce Vita in Italia. And uh, cool. give me one second and let me share this. Wow. this I'm guessing. Hey, uh, oh. This is in southern Italy. It's uh, one of the most famous um, destinations for a lot of Italians to go down to the south of Italy. Um, I have not been there yet, but I'm very interested in going. The problem is in the summertime, the worst places are being rented for like hundred to hundred and fifty dollars a night, and that is you know quite expensive in in Europe. But so here we got this uh, villa here in um not too far from from uh, the beaches and, and whatnot for two hundred and twenty thousand euros 150 meters squared i think i did the the math is that like 1600 feet squared i don't know but it's got seven rooms i'll do that quick so let's go through this bad boy terrible first photo i think they should do something different you'll see but this is pretty quint quintessential italian type vibe you can see the wine on the top cupboards over there it's kind of funny well, lots of wine So, I mean, this is a pretty big home for, for Italian standards. The seven rooms, got your own little compound. That's what they call it, um, a villa. Got the barbecue area out there. I see windows open. Is that typically there's no AC? Yep. Okay. Very rare. So, I mean, to me, you could do a lot for, you know, renting out and whatnot. I mean, it's pretty big for, for Italian standards. And you got uh, some privacy, some green. And it's in a great location, like I said, in the summertime. Look at that. It's pretty big, no? Yeah. That's, uh, that's I did, if my math is right, it's about 235,000 American. Yep. So how close is it to water? Uh, it's private, their thing, but it's in like Tropez and it's a smaller thing. So you could probably get to the water within, you know, five minutes on a Vespa. I assume you could probably walk there within 20 minutes. Yeah. And Tropez. Like I said, like, places like this, they were renting um, in this area when I was looking, I think last summer, or the summer before, I remember that we had the pandemic too. I would have to pay like 100 to $150 for one of those bedrooms a night. And that's, I mean, and you'd share with other people. Yes. Oh wow. So I wasn't even getting my own place down there. Like it's it's expensive, especially during the summer. And we're talking from May to you know maybe the end of September. So I think yeah, you can right. make a killing, you know, renting out. But also, you know, from everything I've heard, it's just like that's where the magic happens. And the, the candy's going to buy it. I think I should plan a visit first. <laughs> well, and then here's the thing, too. So it's in Italy, you know, a G7 country, European Union, Schengen. You're not buying in Albania like the one we showed or Brazil. And Andy's huge objection has always been, oh, they're going to just take the house away. They're, they're not going to take an American house away in Italy. So do you guys think this is a, a decent investment? Oh, it's an hour away from an international airport. OK, so you just take, um, you know, a car or there's a train that goes right to the airport. Um, I think that's a pretty good location. You'll fly somewhere from the USA into Rome and then probably down to Tropea Airport. So you have to exchange at a um, an airport at least once or twice. But um, I don't know. To me, I think uh, it's a pretty damn good deal, no? Well, well, it depends. I mean, can you VRBO the thing out? Is that allowed there? Yes. I just okay. I told you. What one do you think you're VRBO out for for how many months? Huh? This is a math equation. How many, how many, what I'm going to ask you is how many dollars it'll generate in revenue. You know, so if it only rents five months out of the year, but it's hundred bucks a night, you're making 4,500 bucks a month in rent. So you you can make 25,000. I'm going totally off rough numbers. 25,000 is your service. So that's, you know, a 10% gross ROI. That's that, it's not horrible, but it, if you have debt service and it is. Is it, yeah. Is it kind of a, a destination at certain times? 
or is it oh, year round? Southern Italy, you can live year round pretty comfortably, but the summer is insane. Like it's very hard to get anything in Southern Italy or Sicily because mm-hmm. all the Italians and then all the Europeans like want to go there. And now a lot of Americans have been visiting too. So I think you could rent it, you know, year round through Airbnb, VRBO, but you're going to like, you know, up the price crazily from May to, you know, end of September. Every time I hear you talk, it's all Italy always comes back to the most passionate place. Is that true with a lot of people once they start going overseas? Is that Italy is like the spot? Yeah, I think um, Italy is my favorite for sure. There's just a certain like feeling about it. Some people like Spain though. Spain's got a similar vibe, but I don't think there's anything that compares to, to Italy. I mean, I don't know about the most passion. I, I mean, you're talking like Brazil and whatnot is freaking they're, they're crazy over here. But just the, 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 the balance between safety, you know, aesthetic, feelings, uh, romanticism, I think Italy for sure. Yeah. Wine, wine, food. Vino. <laughs> you, uh, you got a relationship with that vino. Um, they, uh, what about the, what about those, uh, what about those, uh, like, uh, like Greece and some of those other areas where there's islands and is that, I know their government's broke, but, um, or has been for years. There's property tax is terrible over there too. I don't think it's yeah. as brutal for, if you only own one home in Italy, if you own multiple, it gets crazy. But the reason why I showed this Southern Italian property too, is in the South of Italy, like there's homes, you've heard this for like one euro, right? And you have to renovate it because it's in an old town with that many people and that, you know, gets to 50,000, 75,000 euros. But Property in the south of Italy, because there's no industry down there, is super, super cheap, cheap. Like a lot of British people have bought it up because, you know, they can work remotely or they can fly there quickly, right? Because um, there's no jobs in the south. All the industry is in the north. It's, it's totally different, like country, the north and the south of Italy. But the south is where the vacationers are. Yes, the south is the best weather. They say the best food. They say better people, nicer people. It's, Yeah. So more hospitality restaurant kind yeah. of industry than, okay. hundred percent, hundred percent. I'd be interested, you know, I'd, I'd obviously want to visit, you know, a place like that before I'd invest in it, but that a, a $235,000 investment is, is a no brainer for in the States here, but. Yeah, it's very inexpensive. Seems, seems like it's got the numbers dialed in. I'd, I'd take a look at it. All right. Beautiful. Cool. Well, let's get to our last little thing here. Kind of a role play. Um, need you guys, your smart brains, to help this person out. Okay, so I need to pop it up. Let's help them. Yeah. One All right. <clears throat> hold, on, hold, on, hold on. Let me put it up here quick. I lost it. There's that eight thousand dollar thing again. Come to Minnesota. There's a plan for you. How about that? Do you remember what that plan is called, Andy? What? What's that plan called that they're giving eight thousand dollars to new? Um, is that uh, need more context? What, what, what we talked about at the beginning. What was that? What was that plan? <laughs> <laughs> this plan? No, no, long ago. I can't All read right. it. Oh, Let's there it see. is. <laughs> the seller is set to close the deal with the buyer next week, but has been informed that the buyer can't muster up the funds to make the payment. And it was requested the seller to pay $8,000 of the closing costs to make the deal work called renegotiating the deal. All right. The seller who is a working class individual is frustrated by this as they accepted the buyer's offer because they had to approve a letter for 60,000 more than their offer. So if this house was 340,000, they came in and gave them a $400,000 approval letter. And this demand is not pocket change for them. The seller's looking for other options. Uh, other options than relisting it or accepting the $8,000 yet. Would you like to start on that one, Andy? What would you recommend? No, if, you're representing I, the, if you're representing the seller, let's get oh, I'd, I'd tell them to go to hell. I'd, uh, in two seconds, I'd be like, listen, I'd be like, you uh you you want eight grand, you go talk to your parents. We're we're not a charity. I mean, unless I didn't and I was trying to I was trying to comprehend everything you were saying there. So I don't know if they found something on a home inspection or if they just were short on money. Just so short on money, came up to close yeah, and grow yeah. up and show some responsibility and figure out a way to get it done. No. But just being honest, I mean that's what I would do. I'd, I'd go right back 
It's amazing how when when the kids are like, mom and dad, I can't believe I'm losing a deal over eight grand. And mom and dad say, oh, let's strike a check as long as the lender will allow the, the gift from the parents. And all of a sudden, wham, bam, you get the thing done and your client has $8,000 more in their pocket. I've learned that when you push back, 95% of the time, the buyers will figure it out. I think all of our first instincts as a realtor is like, screw you. No way. We're not going to do it. But then you also have to look at the seller situation. And it's unfortunate that these things happen, but they do happen and we have to deal with them. And so now it's like, okay, what's the situation we're in? Now, the market that we have been in and, and for a long time is that, heck, yeah, this is great. Let's get rid of them because we're going to sell our house for more money. But that might change or, hey, I've got to get into a house that I purchased. And so they kind of got you. And um, it's, it's one of those things that's, uh, that's tough to do. Um, I have um, done this. I just did it. But uh, that was an attempt of a buyer on a listing of mine. And this person was getting a really good deal. They kept missing closing times. And uh, I just said, you know what? I'll buy it. I'll buy it for that. You know, so uh, I did. <laughs> and that's, we ended yeah. up getting rid of that person, called their bluff. And uh, and they really weren't bluffing because they, they weren't able to do it. But it was one of those things that we're able to, you know, save it. I fixed it up, turned around and resold it again. Um, seller's happy. Chris is happy. Everyone's happy. But um, you don't get that. That doesn't happen a lot because not many people are able to go purchase it you know, right away, but, um, you've got to have a, a realtor that's going to look at all of the, the whole picture and be able to tell you and give you your options. Because if we don't give the options and all of a sudden one of those things happen, like we say, screw them, don't do it. Well, all of a sudden the market's horrible and we're not in tune with that. Now right. our sellers are going to get stuck and it's going to just be worse for them. Well, and, and I've, I've learned, I guess, over the years that sometimes when you push back, um, you'll get what you want. But yet you can always respond back again. They say, you know what? Sorry, the whole deal is going to blow up. You know, the parents won't contribute. Um, then I'll ask the agent. I'll say, hey, would you be willing to kick in a concession if I do? And then all of a sudden you're like, okay, can we do that? Is that going to fly? And then last result is you just go to your seller and you say, hey, listen, in today's market conditions, I'm advising that you take this deal. I'm conceding this. The other buyer's agent's conceding that to help out and, uh, you know, or whatever. In the old days, Chris, we also used to be able to take back a second. So the, it'd be called seller uh, financing. And the sellers could take an $8,000 loan out and they'd say, hey, we'll, we'll hold this for 0% for two years. And in two years, um, you refinance the house, get eight grand and pass or whatever. And that, that was another way we used to do stuff like that too. So, but The lending company, mortgage company just has to be aware of it because if they if they don't accept that and it's a problem later on, then you can you committed fraud against the mortgage and you're stating that you're not doing that. So um, you gotta be, you gotta be careful, but that is totally true. There's a lot of mortgage companies that will do that. Um, and sometimes that uh, agent might have to borrow them the money as well. So. Been there. Yep. All right. What you, what you boys got coming up? Anything fun, exciting? I got a new one uh, going on the market today in Brooklyn park. Oh. Nice rambler. Oh. Got another one yeah. coming in Coon Rapids, Ham Lake, Blaine. I I, I got some good stuff coming. I, I was saying the a lot of people. It seems like it was a kind of delayed spring with with uh, the listings. Um, kind of a lot of people hesitating, and now they're like, you know what? Let's go for it. So, yeah. got a real nice one. Uh, oh, we got to get your your buddy Stulpus on this one. I'm I'm listing a place right where he bought. Oh, he, he did do his yard up right. I'll tell you that. And my kind of place kind of overlooks him. So whoever wants to stare at Stulpus um, can uh, come by. My In his mankini place. on yeah. the deck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Deck. I've sat on that deck many times now. A couple, well, at least a couple times. And it it's cool, man. It's uh, There's that little nature area right behind them. And man, the wildlife that comes in there—they've got some beautiful deer and turkeys. Well, and he's, he's he's feeding them. That's why they're all coming up there. He's he's. If that's he's, legal, then yes, he does. If it's illegal, no, he doesn't. <laughs> I, uh, maybe that's just where he eats at night. He has this yeah. big like trough that he fills up and he goes and touches it. I don't. He know. did. They did do the landscaping right though, didn't they? Yes. 
I told him that too. It's gorgeous. I mean, the retaining walls, like your customer, your new customer has enjoyed the look. I mean, he, they stuck a ton of money into that. It just looks gorgeous. What's, what's interesting about that, Nick, is that it's an association. So they're single families, but within this, within this association. And when someone comes in and does it right like that, it only helps everyone else because any buyer that's coming in to look, and this is a, a resale in a neighborhood that's getting built up, but that people look at it and say, wow, look at what they did to there. And that, so your value, your values can go up because someone did it the right way. So thank where's you, Mark. Your, uh, where's your client headed to? Uh, it's a place kind of uh, way down south, kind of in a corner where there's a certain governor that's trying to be a president there. Oh. Florida. That's where they're going. That'd be fun. Yeah. Well, that's great. How about you, Nick? What do you got going on this week, buddy? Just staying here. Have Actually, a game? I uh, no. I um, I'm going to Salvador. Um, it's a famous Brazilian city. Very dangerous. Um, next week for a holiday, so it should be exciting. Why right? the heck would you do that? Because every dangerous place, there's beautiful places too, and it's like famous colonial city. It's on the water, perfect weather. So I'll be with the Brazilians. I'll be safe, and you know. I won't be a dumb gringo, but uh, it'll be great. I'll send some. No, no chains, Nick. No, no chains. chains. I haven't been wearing one for a while. <laughs> They're stripping them. And yeah. But everyone I, else. I, yeah. Yeah. No, that's it. I, 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 yeah. You've uh, lived it, so you know. Everyone else, you know, give us a review. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're bumping up on subscribers. Like our Woo-hoo! Facebook uh, reels. They're reaching the algorithm and, uh, Here's the link tree. All you got to do to find our websites, all information, just click that little link tree and bravo. All right, guys. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Thanks for joining us this week on the Real Estate Radio Hour. Don't forget to visit our website, realestateradiohour.com, where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or your preferred podcast listening app. If you enjoyed today's episode, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes or sharing us with a friend. Until next time, stay awesome, Twin Cities.